So if you ended up clicking on this video because you got totally clickbaited by my thumbnail, I super apologize. But the reality is that the Avada is not doing 88 miles an hour. That was actually an issue that happened because I smacked into a tree and it kind of slapped the drone silly for a second. And before it had a chance to regain all of its composure, it thought it was doing 88 miles an hour when it was probably closer to like 20 miles an hour. But this is a really important video because it's going to cover a lot of topics regarding how the drone actually acts, reacts, and performs after having performed the motor upgrade. So in a minute I'm going to show you some flight video directly out of the goggles too. It's the DVR footage, so it's completely unedited, it's just raw, not stabilized or anything like that, but it's got all the OSD elements so you guys can look out for things like top speed and any errors or anything that are occurring depending on what's happening in the circumstances within the flight. Also, the overall flight duration of this particular flight, and you can see how I'm actually aggressively flying in the maneuvers I'm doing comparatively to what you typically do with your Avato as you fly. But the overall flight was about five minutes and 30 seconds before I actually smashed into a wooden post. And uh, yeah, you'll get to see that at the very end as well. It's perfectly fine. I smashed into all kinds of things with this drone and I still have yet to break anything, um, but yeah. So hang out to the very end if you want to see that. Also at the very end, I'm going to cover a couple of topics that I want to talk about regarding its overall performance and some just serious truths about what to expect even after performing the motor upgrade. So let's go ahead and hop into the flight video and I'll see you on the other side. Faces. We were off to the races and I thought to myself, hold tight. 
nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. So now that you got a chance to actually see that footage, I want to address a couple of things that occurred in the video. First off, its overall flight performance is significantly increased. It, its ability to be able to handle maneuvers that it wouldn't really want to do in the past is much better. And I think for me, that's why I really enjoy this upgrade because it's at a point now that it's able to do what I want it to do and what I expect it to do. It does come at a little bit of a reduced cost as far as battery life is concerned. Overall efficiency is a little bit lower because the KV is higher. But to me, it is not noticeable. Again, this flight was about 5 minutes and 30 seconds. I think the battery is somewhere around the 30% range, which was pretty much what I was getting prior to the motor upgrade. Maybe another extra 45 seconds to a minute total, depending on how hard I was actually pushing it. But as you can see, battery efficiency isn't, to me, as much of an issue as some people might think it might be. Um, but again, that's completely up to you and how you choose to use your Avada. If you're somebody who's going to be making real estate videos, then you have no business and you should not ever want to have to do this upgrade. You really don't need to. The Avada performs perfectly fine just as it is stock in those situations. But if you do want to be able to get out there and do a little bit of fun flying, then this is something I highly recommend. Now regarding the issue with the tree, so when you hit a tree or any object for that matter and the Avada sort of gets slapped silly for a second, it tends to have an issue where the sensor is in, in an error mode and it takes a few seconds to be able to regain its composure. Sometimes I've even seen it to the point where the gimbal will be completely out of whack and it's almost as though the gimbal is completely up so when you try to go forward it essentially pitches the drone completely forward and you almost crash. So what I recommend you do when you do get into a situation if you hit a branch or something hard enough and you see that error or any errors for that matter, just give it a second, kind of coast a little bit, let it hover, let it kind of regain its composure before you start kind of going again. That's just my advice. Another thing that you may have noticed in the video is the fact that I actually did perform a pretty sharp yaw, and it did have that situation where it has low yaw authority and low stability. These motors do not completely alleviate the fact that this is still a ducted drone, which has reduced airflow to the propellers, and the fact that its design is kind of made in a way that's not incredibly aerodynamic, and if you imagine the drone trying to do a yaw maneuver, and the air is coming this way, it's almost essentially completely blocking this propeller from getting any air molecules. What ends up happening then is that when the air molecules do hit the propeller, it's almost like a wall for them, and it's, it's equivalent to basically putting your finger in the propellers and stopping the motor yourself. Now, the old motors don't have enough torque to be able to push itself through that. These motors, which produce a lot more torque, are able to kind of handle that situation a little better. It still happens, but it kind of sort of corrects itself and it doesn't get to the point where it's a full loss of control. What was happening on the old motors, and this is why I correctly diagnosed this issue as a motor desync, it's not like a vortex ring state or anything, That's, those are all factors that equal into a motor desync, but what is essentially happening is when that motor finally does catch air molecules after it essentially got stopped by them, and starts to kind of pick up again, the flight controller was like, hey, you stopped for a second, I didn't like that, I want you to pick up where you left off, I need you to overcorrect. It's gonna full throttle that motor all the way to the moon. The other propellers are gonna be spinning at their normal speed, so what essentially happens is that the drone is gonna do this crazy maneuver where it's gonna flip. Now in some cases, if it does flip like this, you may have a high enough altitude that it'll correct itself and you can kind of wiggle your way out of it, but if you're low enough to the ground or you're an experienced pilot who doesn't know how to correct out of any sort of an inverted move like this, then you're probably just gonna go right into the ground or you're gonna to start to overcorrect in other ways and it's gonna to lead to a crash. This drone is specifically designed also to do something called aircraft rollover as a disarm mechanism. So if the drone is just hovering in place, you can grab the drone, physically just flip it over and it'll disarm the drone for you, completely shutting off the motors. I've seen a few videos of people doing this exact maneuver, causing a motor desync, flipping over and the drone completely shuts off and then falls into an ocean. I've also seen issues where people have done this maneuver, and because the flip happens so abruptly, it's like the flight controller in the GPS module almost got out of whack, and the drone doesn't know the difference between up or down or even where it's located at. And in that case, it starts to sort of power down into the ground directly and even cause it more damage than what it would have if it had just disarmed. Either way, these are significant limitations of a ducted drone, and again, these motors do help with that, but they're not going to completely alleviate the ability for the drone to handle what's called yaw authority better than a normal freestyle drone that doesn't have any props 
or any weird airflow situations going on. Fortunate enough for me, and because a lot of these videos I've been putting out in regards to the Avada, have been getting a lot of views and clicks and things like that. I've had a lot of companies have been contacting me lately to try out a bunch of new accessories for the Avada, um, such as Freewell, actually. Uh, I just got these today from Freewell. These are the standard ND filter packs. They also sent me the UV filter and the polarizer filter. I'm going to be doing a lot of testing with those in the upcoming weeks to give you some really good examples of what I think these things can do. I highly recommend that you guys use ND filters if your priority is to get good footage. If you noticed in my flight video after having done the motor upgrade and just taking it out to fly, my, my focus was not on footage whatsoever. So I didn't have an ND filter on and it was on auto settings. Um, the light shafts that were coming through the trees and things like that were causing significant artifacts and that's something that's going to happen if you don't use an ND filter. So I highly recommend if you are looking to get better footage uh, for one, use ND filters. For two, use manual settings and you won't have that issue. But as always, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want to see some upcoming videos regarding the Avada and a bunch of really cool accessories that people are deciding to send me for free, I will be more than happy to put them out to you and tell you what I think about them, if they're worth getting or maybe they're not even worth your time, or where I can see them actually fitting into your day-to-day -day life if you happen to own this little dude. Overall, the performance increase is pretty sick. I really like these motors a lot. I really like the Avada, and I hope you guys do too. So if you have any questions, as always, drop them down in the comments below. And you guys, take it easy.